Welcome to day nine of the 25 apps in 25 day series. The daily series where I show off a brand new app every single day for 25 days in a row. And today we've got possibly one of the simplest apps on the list, but it's also one of the most useful. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I've linked a playlist down below where you can catch up. And as always, just a reminder that this video and this series does not have any sponsors, but it is supported by those of you who download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the digital products that I sell on my website, all of which will of course be linked below. And I do wanna quickly highlight the companion app to this series, my app shelf, which is a library of handpicked app recommendations from yours truly. We literally add brand new app recommendations every single day, so it's definitely worth checking out. But with that being said, let's take a look at Day Nine's application. All right, the app we're talking about today is called Network Switch. And as I said, it genuinely is one of the simplest apps in this entire series in terms of the functionality that it offers in that it allows you to simply switch between network mode configurations just with the press of a button. So let's say you're out and about and you wanna save a bit of battery, then you can use the app to switch to a 4G only mode because while 5G can offer you faster internet speeds, it is also a known battery drainer. Now this app is also not available to download on the Google Play Store, so you will need to grab it via the GitHub link below. And even though the functionality is simple, the setup process isn't that straightforward because it does require permissions to be granted via Shizuku for it to work. And unfortunately, because this app is literally for when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you'll actually need to set up Shizuku via ADB using a computer, not wireless debugging, otherwise this won't work. But fret not, I'm actually gonna show you how to do exactly that in this video. The first thing that you need to do is download some files on your computer, which will enable your device to interact with your computer using command line prompts. To walk you through this download process, I've left a link to an article below that shows you where you can download these files. And there are different versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So download your flavor of choice. But once you've downloaded the files, you then wanna extract the zip file. And within that, you should see a folder called Platform Tools. So with that downloaded, we now need to jump over to our phone and enable its developer settings. We can do this by coming into our phone settings, then scrolling down to the about phone section and the location might vary for you here, but we're looking for an option that says build number, which for me can be found under this nothing OS section here. Wherever it is, we just need to tap it seven times until our pin shows. And then once we've entered our pin, you'll see that it says that we're now a developer and we can now come back twice and open up this system section. And you should now see this new developer option section has been enabled. You then need to open that, scroll down a bit and enable this USB debugging option. And with that now enabled, we can plug our phone into our computer and you'll see this authorization pop up to allow USB debugging, which of course we wanna allow. Now we wanna head back onto our computer and I'm obviously using a Mac here, but it is a very similar process when using a Windows machine, but we basically wanna open the platform tools folder using a command prompt app. So here on my Mac, I'll do it using the terminal app. The first thing I'll do is type CD, then space, then I'm just gonna drag and drop that platform tools folder in like so, then hit enter. From there, I'll type in dot slash ADB space devices and then hit enter. And you should see a random number here that indicates that your device is correctly set up. But if it shows as blank, it might be because you haven't yet enabled USB debugging or you haven't authorized it yet on your device or perhaps your cable is faulty. But once we've verified that our device is plugged in, we're now gonna simply paste a code provided by Shizuku, which I'll also place in the description, then hit enter. And with that done, Shizuku should now be up and running and you can remove your cable. But if you're not sure whether it's worked or not, just check up in this top section. And if it says that it's running, then you're good to go. Now that that's finally set up, as long as you have the Network Switch app installed, you just need to come into this authorized application section within the Shizuku app and toggle the Network Switch option to on. With that done, you can now open up the Network Switch app and you should immediately see this tick icon up here indicating that the app is working. Now, by default, the app is set up to switch between 4G and 5G, but if you live in an area where one of those two or potentially neither of those are great options, then you can tap this configuration toggle up here and that'll take you to this page where you can tweak your two preferred network modes. So I can tap here and change this to 2G or 3G, for example, but I'm actually gonna select this 4G slash 5G mode so that my phone can still cycle between the two automatically. And then I'm gonna change mode B to 4G only. And this is actually probably a better configuration than the default for most people, because if I'm not in an area with great 5G coverage and I've forgotten that my phone is set to 5G only, I might have issues. 
But once you've set your configuration, you just tap save configuration, then we can swipe into our quick settings panel, then tap the edit icon, then I'm just gonna scroll all the way down until I found this network switch option. And once I found it, I'll tap to add it to my quick settings panel. Then I'm just gonna tap to make it bigger, then I'll tap back to save it. And now whenever I wanna switch between my two network modes, I can just tap this toggle and boom, there we go. But just to confirm that it does indeed work, I'll actually turn off my Wi-Fi, and you can see that my phone says I'm connected to 5G. So now I'll tap the toggle again, and there you go, it now says I'm connected to 4G. And I'll tap it one more time just for good luck, and boom, we're back on 5G, so the app is working perfectly. And there you have it, that is Network Switch, and that is yet another day complete. Don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.